What's up guys, my name is Victor, a fellow 21st century seeker here, and today I'm gonna to tell you three tips for a newly awakened light worker. Now, I have personally been experiencing this ascension transition for the past eight years of my life. And when I started going through this, there was not very much information available out there. There was only the really old school, like traditional methods that I found to be very unhelpful, unfortunately. And I kind of had to carve out my own way. But now we find ourselves with a lot of people going through this now. So my aim is to help you guys avoid a lot of the pain and frustration and unnecessary strife and turmoil that I experienced during my early years of a newly awakened light worker. Number one is to establish a daily ritual, a daily practice, because you are going to see in tip number three where I talk about how you're always going to be changing, to never get comfortable with how things are. Because of the acceleration in the changes of yourself and in your life, it causes a lot of inner chaos and inner turmoil mentally, emotionally, physically, literally, and within your relationships, within your career, where you live. Everything starts to really just start moving fast. And again, this creates a lot of turmoil. So. By forcing upon yourself a predictable, uh, stability, reinforcing practice, ritual, if you will, it can really help you stay as grounded as one can be while in the midst of this chaotic process. So my personal morning routine is a big, uh, it's a very eclectic thing because I was a personal trainer for many years and I trained like an athlete, martial arts and yoga. I've done all these different things basically. So I've kind of compiled it into this like synergistic and harmonious blend of uh, a lot of different things basically. So I do some foam rolling, which I'll go into in another video, some meditation, some yoga. I recite positive affirmations. I write in my journal and write out my goals. I read something spiritual like from Eckhart Tolle or from an enlightened master, something to kind of bring me into oneness. And I, I kind of cram this into about 10, 15 minutes per day. But that 10, 15 minutes really uh, directs the course of my day in a positive way. Even if my day explodes into nuttiness, I still am going forth, at least for a while, with a nice boost of positive momentum. And again, that can help keep me grounded when all the changes start spilling into my life later in that day. And why a, why a daily ritual? Because there's days I don't wanna do it. There's days you're not gonna wanna do it, but if it becomes a habit, so much so as brushing your teeth and going to the bathroom and taking a shower, you'll just do it anyways. And you'll get more benefit out of it the longer you do it because you'll come to have an associated state of being that that start that kind of gets triggered as you go into this routine and practice it's like it's like muscle memory you just kind of condition yourself to associate this practice with a certain state of tranquility and uh, and peace so you'll get into greater depths of peace and tranquility the more you do it faster Number two is to trust your gut, trust your instinct, your intuition, your higher guidance, your inner compass, your spirit self, your spirit guides, however you want to label this outer source is other source of information other than your logical reasoning mind, which is incredibly limited as you'll come to see. Trust your gut, trust your intuition. Not that this is easy. I know how hard this is because we're so used to relying on our own logic for our decision making. And that's what everybody else does. Everyone does what makes the most sense for them. However, you're going to be given guidance often that completely contradicts your logical reasoning mind. And I believe that to be for a reason. I believe because it's aiming our spirit is aiming to break us of that. If we are going through this ascension process and one day we'll live more of a fourth density reality, that is that that is a it's a person who has risen above thought, risen above the dependency upon thought and plotting and planning and thinking and conjuring up. That has no place. We are evolving out of that. We are expanding beyond that. And to do that, we actually have to do it. We actually have to live as if we have done that. And we slowly get stretched by these nudges, these inner, uh, this inner guidance becomes more and more 
counterintuitive, more and more bizarre, more and more of a leap of faith. Um, but as you do it, you build confidence in your in your uh, your higher self. And then as you do this, because your higher self, your spirit self, can see from the mountaintop all the whole scope of your life, it's tell it's giving you good sound advice. Even though from down here in the valley, it seems like it doesn't make any sense. It's saying go left, and you're like, well, if I go left, I'm gonna stumble into this fucking puddle. And it's thinking, well, if you go right, you're going to fall off a goddamn cliff. And this puddle ends. And then you have this beautiful oasis that you're just going to chill in for three weeks, just hanging out. You know, it, uh, it's got good advice. It expedites your goals, your dreams. It brings them forth to you much faster. But in order to enjoy this acceleration, which we all say we want, we must let go. We must just almost ignore our ego mind and just rely on our intuition. And people around you are gonna wonder what the fuck you've been up to, why you're doing the things you're doing. Why'd you quit your job? Why'd you sell your house? Why'd you move? Why'd you do this? Why'd you break up with her? Why'd you break up with him? There's always a reason. There's always a great reason. And it doesn't matter what fucking people think. People who are gonna judge you aren't viewing life from the same the same state of consciousness as you so therefore they're going to see things vastly differently but you if you want to awaken you you have to learn how to trust your intuition and the only way to do that is just to fucking go forth boldly courageously take those leaps of faith as you are guided to do so number three is get used to changes get come to expect changes Drop the drop your uh, inclination of settling. Don't don't get too comfortable with anything. Awesome things are going to come into your life. Awesome situations, awesome relationships, awesome states of being, awesome states of health, awesome like material things. They're going to come into your lap, but oftentimes they don't stay there. And though it's great when these things happen, our clinging on to them, our, our like being like trying to like stop the process and just stay stationary because we feel safe all of a sudden, that's gonna turn on you because the, the, the fourth density way is constantly flowing, shifting, moving, transforming, morphing through life quickly. It, that's what fourth density really is all about. It's an acceleration of your worldly experience. So things will change. You'll move maybe a lot. Maybe you'll change a lot of different careers. Maybe you'll go through a lot of different partners. People will die. New people will come into your life and they'll leave just as quickly. You'll start a business and then it'll shut down. All these different things, but it's fun. It, once you can let go and let the river just take you, you'll have just a, an ecstatic uh, raid of unique and, and interesting and surprising experiences just kind of flowing through you. But it's hard, it's hard to let go into this river when we're so used to looking for safety because this world is a very kind of nutty place, it's kind of hostile, there's a lot of problems that can arise you know, within relationships, your finances, your home, we don't trust the governments, we don't trust other people, we don't trust our spouse, we don't trust our anybody. Um, but you just gotta get over that basically. And that's what this process will do for you. It will help you get over that by leading you to circumstances and situations and people and places that will trigger inner resistance to this flowing of consistent change. And coming back to number one, establishing some semblance of a predictable routine will really help you stay detached from all this stuff. Because to, to, to get to this state of being I'm talking about where you just flow through life, you have to like be in a perpetual state of uh, ease and letting go. But again, our, our, we were so conditioned to do the exact opposite that it takes a bit of a while, a bit of a process, some circumstances that need to kind of trigger certain things within your life where you can finally retrain your logical mind to learn to actually trust your higher self. You'll have solid evidence within your own life to trust it. And the more you experience this, the more you'll trust, the more you trust, the faster you flow, the faster you flow, the faster you become a, an enlightened master in this world, but not of it. Driven by spirit, where spirit is just channeled through you almost at all times. 
You learn to let go of your ego mind so your youest you, your highest you, your highest self can just spring forth. That's what this is about. Our higher self, our, our spirit self is bubbling up. It's becoming known in our conscious reality so it can live through us. And what has to go is our personality, who we think we are, who we think we want to be who people have told us we are, that has to die, that has to crumble, that has to break away.